Welcome to Mount Zion Baptist Church's live stream. Our mission at Mount Zion takes its inspiration from Ezekiel 34, 16. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed. With the help of modern technology, we can gather and virtually praise, worship, and minister God's Word. If this is your first time tuning in, we would like to give you a special welcome. You could have picked any church's live stream, but you chose ours, and we thank you for that. Our ministry is to spread God's Word throughout the world, whether it be in person at our church or virtually on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share us online at MountZionHudson.org and on social media via Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch TV. Please share this with your family and friends, and thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you. Good morning and happy Father's Day this morning. Uh, this morning we're going to celebrate and recognize and say thank you to all of the dads, the fathers, the daddies, the pops, whatever name that you are called, new dads, experienced fathers, men who are dads to children without a father figure, no matter what your name is, no matter what you're called, happy Father's Day this morning. And thank you for all your love, support, encouragement, advice. We also don't want to forget those fathers, though, who, who live in our memories today, those who have lost their fathers. Mount Zion appreciates all of you, so we just want to say thank you. But we're also all thankful that we all have a father. We all have the same father, the father who loves us, who cares for us, and who um, looks after us, and that is our Heavenly Father. We all have Him. Okay. You know, we, we like to add a little humor, a little fun, make the day a little light. Uh, and so the mothers like their muffins on Mother's Day. So dads, I hope when you leave this morning that you like your Tootsie Pops and have a happy Pops Day. So. <laughs> So now we're going to recognize our newest father, and then we're going to recognize our most experienced father. <laughs> so if we have a dad or a father who is here this morning who has a child who is 12 months or younger, please stand up. 12 months or younger. Okay. And then we're going to recognize our most experienced, oldest father. <laughs> okay, if you are 90 years old or older, would you please stand up? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait a okay, wait a minute. How, how, how old are you? 91. How old? How old is DC? 92. 92. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you.
Good morning. Uh, like I said, welcome to everyone this morning. Welcome to Mount Zion Baptist Church. Uh, we want to extend a special welcome to you if you are a guest with us this morning. Thank you for coming to worship with us and worship the Lord. And we would ask that if you are a guest with us, that you fill out a guest information card, uh, which can be found in the Welcome Center or in the back of the pew in front of you. So we'd like to have a record of your visit. Um, announcements this morning. Uh, please be in prayer for our children and leaders as they travel to Center Kid at Gardner Webb this week. Uh, the crafting uh, for the Mission Bazaar begins Thursday night, June 20th, in the Fellowship Hall at 6 p.m. The Baptist men will not have their regular meeting on Friday, June 28th, as Pastor Zach and his family will be moving that weekend, and the Baptist men will be helping them to move. Uh, on Sunday, June 30th, following the morning worship service, we will have a, an appreciation Sunday dinner for Pastor Robert and Miss Martha Livingston. So please join us and bring a well-filled basket as we have lunch together. Uh, other announcements, uh, the baby bottles are due today, but because Miss Sherry is going to be out next week, we can extend that deadline to next Sunday. Uh, so next Sunday, the deadline for the baby bottles. And then also Miss Angie has asked that I draw your attention to the block party insert. Uh, it's happening next Saturday, June 22nd. And if you are helping, please be here at the appropriate time. Are there other announcements this morning? Good morning, Mountain Zion. Just, just bring attention again. We have our trip in November 10th through the 15th for our work week at Caswell. Uh, just let me or Jennifer know. We'd love to have some new ones to go along. If you've got any questions what it's about or what we do, you can speak to one of us or one of the ones that's been before. So we're looking forward to having some new ones. Thank you. All right. Are there other announcements this morning? Okay, let's do some celebrating. Do we have any birthdays today or this past week? Please stand. Happy birthday. Do we have any anniversaries today or this past week? No anniversaries, okay. All right, please rise as we greet one another in fellowship. As we continue to fellowship this morning, let's sing together, I Believe.
build your house on anything else, it will not. Let's sing together. congregation. Children, if you'll please come forward at this time for your children's time with Miss Wesley. Let's sing together Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me this I
Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. We have new friends this morning. I love it when we have new friends. Okay, so my bag today is coming from Miss Anna, and I'm going to pray it's not alive. Right, not alive. That's one of the rules. Okay, all right. Here, I got to dig down in here and I got to find it. And I have a. I have to do it, Girl Scouts. Okay, so it, it's your pen. What? What? No, let's not take the back off of that. Okay. Okay. So what? Tell me what this award is for. It's just, it's, oh, it's your mom's, okay. Uh-huh, so there was a little bit of help in there, was there? Amen. Good job, Anna. All right, you thought you were going to really get me here, didn't you? Okay, well, you might in the end. Okay, here we go. All right, so Anna, we, Anna's a Girl Scout. Our, our church, everybody regularly attends knows Anna's a Girl Scout, right? And we know that when it is cookie time, if you see Anna coming, you had better run if you don't have any cash on you because the girl wants her cookies. And now you can even get them online, so you can't even say, I don't have any cash. And some of us have enough cookies in the freezer to do us for two years, okay? Because Anna knows how to sell those cookies. All right, well, let me ask you a question. What if, what if all of us went after telling people about Jesus like Anna goes after selling those cookies? What would happen? What would happen? What do you think? Do you think if every time somebody saw you coming, they knew you were going to be positive and happy and have something, something to say about how good God is and how much Jesus loves them? Do you think they would like to see you coming? Some would. Some wouldn't. Some would run. That's the truth. Some people just don't get it that they need Jesus. But if we all worked as hard as Anna does, if we worked half as hard as Anna does to tell other people about Jesus, how many people do you think would know about Jesus in a year? Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine of us up here. What if we told 1,000 people about Jesus in a year? Can you imagine that? Church, what if you told 10 people about Jesus in a year? What if we went after people who need Jesus like Anna goes after cookies? Boy, y'all won't eat your Girl Scout cookies without thinking about that now, will you? All right. Does that, how's that work? Is that, that, okay, Anna says I get points today. I don't get double points, though, because I didn't put fathers in there, did I? Sometimes I can do a double, but I couldn't do a double today. All right, will you pray with me? Will you pray with me, buddy? It is a microphone so everybody can hear what I say. Okay, so but we're going to pray right now, okay? Because I know what's coming next. All right. Can I interject? Yes. One thing we need to do, folks, we need to pray for our kids. What better time? They're up here that are going to Centricid this week. So if you're going to Centricid, either you're going as a child or a chaperone, would you please stand at this time? All right, instead of Miss Wesley playing, if you'll oblige, why don't, Miss Wesley, why don't you pray for our kids? Y'all heard that, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, I will pray for yes. my kids. Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> yes. If, let Miss right. Wesley lead us today in our prayer for our children going to Centra Kid, that they would have a blessed time. Pray for chaperones. Pray for Pastor Gary, because he just got back from Caswell. Now he's going to Centra Kid. Pray for wait, 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 wait. renewed strength, that they would have a great week in the Lord. And I just found out we need to definitely pray for Lily. She was not given lunch today. Okay. Please pray for Lily. All right. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much 
that you have given us the gospel to share with other people. Lord, thank you that you give us examples like Anna of how to be encouraging and how to step out of our comfort zone and, and approach people. Dear God, give us that burn. Give us that desire. We have a world that needs you, Lord. They need your love. Dear God, I pray for our kids and our adults going to going to Centric Kid, dear God, what an amazing time for these kids. What a time to learn about you and to grow in your knowledge, Lord, and to learn how to share who they are in your faith. God, I ask that you give an extra measure of strength, an extra measure of patience, an extra measure of rest. Dear God, I ask that you just walk among them, grow them, fill them with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and bring them back to us safely, Lord, but changed forever. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
There's no God like Jehovah. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, you are the one and only God we serve, Father. And I just praise you today, God, thanking you for being our Holy Father, Father. God, just uh, blessings that we have from you, Father, for your love, mercy, and grace, but most of all for your Son, Jesus, Lord. We praise you and honor you today and give you thanks for all that you've done for us individually and here at Mount Zion as this church uh, will continue to grow and uh, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in our community and our world. Just help us each one to be in that, that example each day as we go in our workplace, our community, wherever we may, we may serve each day, Father, just be that example of Jesus Christ in this world and tell the others about you, Father. Just be with us today, be with Pastor Robert as he brings the message, Lord, you've laid upon his heart, Father. Help us to understand and know you closer, Lord, that we may grow closer to you, Father, and to be able to share your gospel with others, Lord. We thank you for those that are here today, those that couldn't be here for whatever reason, on vacation, sick or uh, homebound, Father. We just lift them up to you, Father. Be with them. Help them in their daily struggles, Lord. Help us each one as we uh, go through our week this week, God, uh, to look to you in each and every circumstance we come into contact with, Father. This week, just be that shining light for you. I love you and I praise you, God. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Congregation, please stand as we sing together, Faith of Our Fathers. Good morning. You folks sure do look a lot better than the last time I stood up here and looked at you. <laughs> For those of you who are visiting today, that's an inside joke that we won't follow. <laughs> but I do appreciate your concern for me and prayers for me. We're doing fine so far. We're doing great. Thank you for allowing us to be away last week. Uh, it was kind of an early Father's Day that we, Martha and I got to go to uh, Georgia to visit our son and, and his new son, five weeks old. So we got to 
uh, cuddle that little fella. He paid us no attention whatsoever. Uh, but one of these days he will, and we'll enjoy that. But uh, thank you for giving us that time away. It's good to see Walter and Jacqueline Ford here with us this morning. Welcome. Good to see you folks here. Walter is my deacon from Yadkin Baptist Church. He still calls and checks on me and sends cards and all that kind of stuff. I appreciate them very, very, very much. I was surprised to see Gary here this morning. I, and and I've, I've lost him. He may be laying down on the bench back there somewhere because... Uh, he just got home from Caswell, and I can tell you, that's no picnic. Uh, and he's getting ready for the children's trip, and so we'll be praying for him uh, this week uh, especially. If you have your Bibles with, me, with you, please turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, the greatest uh, story that's written in the Scriptures by many estimations. Luke, chapter 15, beginning with verse uh, 11, although I'm going to sneak back up and read verses 1 and 2 to begin with, but if you are able, would you please stand for the reading of God's Word in these moments. Let me read first verses 1 and 2. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with him. Now that's the context of this story. And there are three parables that Jesus gives. We're going to go to the third one because this is Father's Day. Verse 11 says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set out for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine that, uh, in that whole country, and he began to be in want or need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him out to feed to the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the, figs were, uh, the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Bring a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Heavenly Father, thank you that we learn from this story that you are a good and great father who loves his children even when we rebel against you. And your doors are always open to welcome us back into the fold. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts today, for there are some here probably who are in a far country, or some who are not as close to you as they ought to be. And may your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts and draw us nearby. We thank you, Father, for this special day when we honor our fathers and we just pray that we can be the fathers that you have called us to be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Someone has noted that the word father, if you look it up in the dictionary, it comes somewhere between the words fatigue and fathead. <laughs> so all of you fatigued, fat-headed fathers out there, happy Father's Day to you. We appreciate you, and we honor you, and we, we uh, thank God for you. Um, a little boy was asked, what's the, what was Father's Day like? And he said, well, it's just like Mother's Day, only you don't have to spend as much money on the present. <laughs> a man jumped on the bus one day with his five kids, uh, and the bus driver said, wow, are these all your kids, or are you on a picnic? He said, they're all mine, and this is no picnic. And if you're one of those with a lot of kids, you understand that completely, do you not? My, our dad would have agreed with that for sure. Um, one day a dad took his son to school, and when he got home, the wife asked, 
Well, did little Billy cry when he got to school? He said, no, but the teacher sure did. <laughs> Luke 15. Luke 15 contains the greatest of all the parables of Jesus. Charles Dickens, who was a noted poet, says that this is the finest short story that has ever been written. It's a powerful message of the love of God as our Heavenly Father, the love that, that draws us to Himself, the, law, the, the love that welcomes us back when we have gone astray. It's a simple, but it's a profound truth about the Heavenly Father. Using this wonderful story, I want to talk about the facets of fatherhood. There are three that I want to mention. First of all, there is the Father's joy. Secondly, there is the Father's pain. And thirdly, there is a father's hope. It's the father's joy to give good gifts to his children. In Jesus' story, the father had been a successful man in business, had provided a safe, comfortable home and life for his family. From his hard work, he had given to his children, to his family, the very best that he possibly could. This father was not only providing for their daily needs, he was also providing for their legacy and for their inheritance that they would receive down the road in the future. This father loved his children and found great joy in giving to them the very best that he possibly could give. Now this story is about, not about the prodigal son as it is usually named. It's about the heavenly father and his joy in giving good things to his children that's us. God loves to give good things to his children. Genesis tells us that when God created the heavens and the earth, he looked back and he said, man, this is really good. And then he gave that good creation into the hands of his son, Adam, and his wife, Eve, that they should care for his creation. When God gave Israel a land to live in, it was called the promised land. It was a land flowing with milk and honey, and God gave it to his children because he loved them, and he wanted to give good gifts to his children. God finds great joy in giving to his children the very best that we can receive from his hand. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Uh, God loves to give good gifts to his children. Matthew 7, Jesus said, if you, are, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who seek him or ask from him? It gives great God great joy to be able to give us gifts of love and compassion and forgiveness and hope and, and life and blessings God loves you. God loves you. And God wants to give to you the very best he has for you to enjoy the life that God has given to you. Isn't it true for all of us who are dads? Jesus asked, what man of you, if, if a son asked for a bread, would give him a stone? Or ask for a fish and would give him a serpent? No, we would not do that to our own children. All fathers and all mothers and all parents want to give the very best that we have to our own children. The basic things like food and clothes and shelter or grandpa's squirrel gun or grandma's wedding ring or that heirloom pocket watch. We want to give those precious things to our children, but larger things too, like love and protection, values, respect for the family name, appreciation and a sense of self-worth for who we are. Our, our hearts want to give all those good things to our children. Jacob in the Old Testament, was found great joy in his son Joseph, who was the firstborn of his favorite wife, Rachel. So Jacob gave Joseph a beautiful coat to show his love and approval. Now, a word to the wise here. If you've got 11 other sons, 
don't neglect them either. You know, you may have a favorite and you want to give him the best, but don't neglect the rest. We, good fathers don't play favoritism among their children. That's for sure. But the point is, as fathers, we love to give good things to our children. Good dads would gladly, joyfully sacrifice themselves to give the best that they can for their children. Today, we honor you, dads, because you sacrifice yourself to give your very best to your children because of your love for them. It's a great joy to give good gifts to our children. But it's also a father's pain to see our children struggle in life. In Jesus' parable, the youngest son takes his father's inheritance, cashes it in for what he could get, and blows everything in a few nights' fun experience. To me, that's like taking great-grandfather's pocket watch or grandmother's prized wedding ring, taking it to the pawn shop, asking $10 for it, and then going out and blowing it in one night's drinking a beer. With no respect, no appreciation, no acknowledgement of the internal intrinsic value that that gift had to begin with, without recognizing the sacrifice that was made by the dad or by the mother to give that gift to the child and just throwing it away as if it was nothing whatsoever. Worse than that, this boy breaks the relationship of home. He simply walks away from his father, from his brother, from his family, from those who loved him most, to join with those who cared nothing for him whatsoever, who did not value his life, did not value his values, did not value his, his faith or anything else. Jesus doesn't describe the father's reaction. But you can imagine, can't you? You know what it's like when your child turns away from the values and the faith and the gifts of love that you have given to that child. How did God feel when Adam and Eve rejected his love and went after a taste of forbidden fruit? How did God feel when Israel turned their backs on him and went to worship Baal? Hosea describes it like this. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more I called to him, the more they went from me. I taught him to walk, and his first steps were to walk away. How does a father feel when a child walks away, rejecting the lessons, the values, and the faith he has been taught along the way? Very few dads or moms escape this kind of pain, a child's rejection. It's the nature of things. It's our human nature for children to want their freedom, to rebel against authority, to squander the family treasures. That's why Father's Day and Mother's Day and special holidays come with mixed feelings. There's great joy, there's great appreciation but there's also great pain oftentimes when we realize that sometimes the lesson didn't stick or the gifts weren't appreciated. These days remind us of broken promises and shattered dreams. They find us grieving over our losses and grasping what might have been had we maintained that family connection. But that's life. We all face that possibility a pain. Most of us have experienced, and if you haven't yet, you, you probably will. I laughed and said last week while we were in Georgia, our little grandson, who's five weeks old, paid no attention to us whatsoever. 
the only time he knew I was there when I was holding him and he'd start crying. And I said, thanks a lot, Wesley. One of these days you'll come running and I'll appreciate that time with you. It doesn't mean that we're bad parents. It doesn't mean that our parents failed us. It just means that we live in a broken world and we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when we do, those who love us suffer and long for the day, long for the day when that child comes home. Man. Our hearts. There is great joy in giving good gifts. There is great pain in fatherhood and motherhood when those gifts aren't appreciated, but there is also a father's hope, a father's hope when he can welcome that child home again. This father in the parable waits expectantly for his son to return. It always has intrigued me that in the story that Jesus tells that the father doesn't go looking for his son. He does not go looking for his prodigal son, his wayward son, his wandering son. That's tough love. That's tough love. Sometimes we have to let them fail so that hopefully they will learn a lesson of life and will be brought home again. But every indication is that even though the father did not pursue his son physically, he was eagerly hoping, expectantly waiting, and actively watching for his son to return. He was confident that his son knew that what awaited him at home was grace and mercy and love and forgiveness and food since he was hungry. The father's hope that was those special gifts would someday draw his son back home. And when his son came to his senses, and all fathers pray that their children will someday come to their senses, he got up from the pig pen, he prepared his heart, and he made his way toward home. And from a great way off, the father saw that familiar gait, that familiar posture that he recognized in his son. He did not sit on the porch waiting for his son to arrive. He leaped off the porch and he ran. with his arms open to welcome, to receive, and to embrace that child who is coming home. It is a father's hope for that day. That's the message of the gospel, is it not? Jesus was trying to say to us and to the Pharisees, which we read in verses 1 and 2, that God's grace is large enough, His heart is loving enough, even to welcome the Gentile sinners back into the fold. Luke 19 says, The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost, those who were wandering those who had rejected and rebelled against God, Christ came to seek and to save those who are lost. If you are here today as a runaway or a prodigal child from God, I want you to know that the Heavenly Father has great big arms and a great big loving heart. He's not angry with you. He's, he's hurt, yes. But His heart longs for the day that He can embrace you and welcome you through your repentance and faith when you come home again. Abraham Lincoln was asked one day, 
how he planned to treat the rebellious Southerners after the war, and Lincoln, re Lincoln replied, as if they had never been away. As if they had never rebelled. As if they had never turned away. When we come humbly in repentance and faith to God, He will be always ready to receive and to welcome us home again. Don't give up. Therefore, don't give up on this Father's Day. I want us to find encouragement not to give up on our children. Proverbs 22, 6 reminds us, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. I'm not sure, exactly sure all of what that means, but it just means that we ought to train up our children in the way they should go. And the hope is that not the promise, this is a proverb, it's not a promise, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a potential it is a possibility, a principle that when we do right, there will come a time when they will recognize that we were right and they will return. When we instill values of grace and love and forgiveness in their heart, it gives them a compass by which they can find their way home again. If we remain committed to Christ, if we live according to our own professions, if we live the way we teach our children to live, then our children will know that what they left behind and what they have been looking for is right where they left it, at home, and they will return. We believe that God answers prayers, and we believe that God is at work in the lives of those that we love. And when we commit ourselves to loving our children and praying for them, we know that God is at work in their lives, and one day He will point them back home again. So we live with vigilant hope and confident assurance that our prodigals one day will come home. It's a great joy to be a parent. It's a great joy to give good gifts to our children. Sometimes we are disappointed. Sometimes we are hurt by their choices and decisions, by their lifestyle. But we live with the hopes that one day they will remember and they will know that the world they live in is not their friend, and the only one who ever loved them is still at home waiting for their return. And maybe that's the greatest gift of all. Their confident assurance that if I go home, Dad will welcome me, Mom will embrace me, and I will find a place at home again. What about you today? Are you one of those runaways? Have you been away from God's love and God's grace? Are you feeling the pinch of sin in your own life? The main point of this, this parable is that God is ready to forgive and receive you home. If you'll humbly come to Him in faith, He will do that. He will forgive your wanderings. He will embrace you and He'll just be like you've never left at all. You'll just be like you've always been right here with Him forever. Are you a parent with a prodigal? Have you given them your best? Then wait, trust, pray, expect, and watch for your child to come home. Heavenly Father, what a story. It is your story. For you are the Father who loves his children loves to give us good things and ways to restore us when we've rejected those good things. I pray, Father, for your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts today because most likely in a congregation this size, we've got some prodigals out here listening. And we just want to tell them that we love them and God loves them and God's ready to welcome them home if they'll come. And for those of us who are dads, or for those of us who are sons who don't have the kind of relationship that we ought to have with each other. Lord, there's nothing more important than expressing and giving love to each other and rebuilding and mending those broken fences, broken relationships. Lord, for some of us, our dads are no longer here with us. And we can't do a lot about that except to allow you to convey to them 
our repentance, our appreciation, and our love for them. We pray that will happen in your heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know what God might be saying to you today, but it's a great day to answer his call to recognize who you are and where you are, maybe to come to your senses and to say, I want better than what I've got and what the world's given me. And the only place I can find it is here with the Lord. Won't you come as we sing? Please stand together as we sing. Thank you so very much for being here, for being good dads, good moms, good church members, good brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we all have those journeys that we're on. We're not all there yet. We've not arrived yet, but God is helping us step by step along the way. Any words need to be shared before we dismiss? Uh, I noticed earlier while the choir was singing, I noticed there's at least 12 empty chairs up there. And I heard some really good voices behind me. And I bet you Dirk would be, lo would be glad to have those wonderful voices in his choir. Amen. 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 What a joy it is to, to sing praises to the Lord. Amen. So you ought to be there in the choir and serving the Lord with what God has given to you, his gifts that he's given to you.
I've got a couple other things to say, and I can't remember what they are. <laughs> Wednesday night, we're going to pick up again with our questions that God asks us. And you just read the book of Job between here and, and Wednesday night, if you can get through it in that amount of time. And we'll talk about one of the questions that God asks Job along the way. And we've got two more Sundays. And the next Sunday, I'm going to talk about how to um, support your local pastor. And so don't miss that. <laughs> how to support your local pastor. Before Zach comes, I want to get you ready for that. All right? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask my friend Mark Morris over here if he would to close with a word of prayer, please. Thank you, Mark. Father, we come before you. We just lift up your name, praise and thank goodsgiving. We thank you that you are a good, good God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord, that when we fall, get back up and ask you to forgive us, Lord, that you're always there to welcome us back. Father, help us within our daily lives to encourage one another. Help us to share Jesus, Lord, with our words and with our actions. And Father, we pray for this thy church, Lord. We pray for Zach and his family as they come. We ask your blessings upon this ministry. We thank you for your goodness. I thank you for thy people here. Or we thank you for Robert and Martha and for their family. We pray for your continued blessings upon them. Lord, we love you. In the powerful, wonderful, precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. As we prepare to leave, let's sing together the chorus of Great is Thy Faithfulness. at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Join us again next week for live worship.